主耶稣圣灵正道 I thank the Lord Jesus that I, have, I still have the opportunity to be able to pastor the church in Gomba. I wouldn't say that I'm pastoring the church, but I'm assisting the work here. Because from this year onwards, I only have one week and this month to spend with you. And it is the ministers and the persons in charge of the Gombak Church who are pastoring the church. I would like to, uh, from today onwards, share with you the Acts of the Apostles. I plan to uh, talk about this uh, on every Tuesday evening, Friday evening, as well as Saturday morning services to talk about this topic. And uh, on the Sabbath afternoon service, we will have a Sabbath uh, sermon. In the past, I will only uh, use the uh, Tuesday's evening service to talk about it. Uh, the, the book of the Bible. Then I realized that I cannot finish the whole chapter, the whole book, after a few years. I'm not sure if uh, I was not very good at, uh, at uh, this kind of sermons or I was too naggy. Then I extended it to Friday evening service. Only then I was able to complete the Genesis and Exodus. So the Sabbath afternoon service, we will still share about the different topics of the Sabbath sermon. Because if I was to share about the episodes of the books of the Bible, um, some of you may not uh, attend the Tuesday services. The episodes of the Acts of the Apostles is the records, historical record of the earliest part of the church. It is also the most reliable record of his history. It is also the most detailed and most precious record of history. Which is why the Acts of the Apostles is also known as the Acts of the Church. And some people also uh, call this the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And finally, it was been um, been called or been known as the Acts of the Apostles. There are three names to this episode. It all depends on which angle do you look at this from. And I look at this from different uh, three angles and three important points. From the perspective of the church, it is known as the Acts of the Church. And the priority would be about the church. But if your angle is from the Holy Spirit, it is known as the acts of the Holy Spirit. Then the priority would be the Holy Spirit. Then you will be able to see how the Holy Spirit works through all calamities and difficulties. If you focus on the people, the workers, then it will be known as the Acts of the Apostles. Because the apostles are also the chosen servants and workers of God. Then it shows that your focus is on the workers of the church. In these three angles of the focus, and we, I would like to focus on the acts of the Holy Spirit. Because if you do not possess the power of the Holy Spirit, there is no way for you to establish the church. 
Not to mention about the church, you can't even build up yourself. So, I personally like to view this from the angle of the Acts of the Holy Spirit. So, we all need to understand that the Acts of the Holy Spirit is the power of the Holy Spirit. So, we all need to understand that the Acts of the Holy Spirit is the power of the Holy Spirit. And every believer of the Lord must understand the salvation plan of the, the Lord Jesus ascended to heaven. If you want to know what is this salvation plan after the Lord Jesus ascended to heaven, you have to read this Acts of the Apostles. Which is why I would like to talk about a main theme of this book. That's building the glorious church. 那这个教会呢？这个荣耀的教会呢？它担负着哦，神啊啊，它它担负着要彰显神的荣耀，它担负着这样的一个一个责任。And the glorious church bears the responsibility to manifest the glory of God。它也担负着哦，要彰显神的权柄。It also to uh does to manifest the power of God。它担也担负着神的计划，就是救赎计划、救恩计划。It is also to manifest the salvation plan of God。所以根据使徒行传的内容，我们给它一个主题叫做。According to the content of the Acts of the Apostles, we give them a theme: building the glorious church. That's to build and establish the glorious church. Please take note that there are three responsibilities of the glorious church. First, since it is the the glorious church, it is to manifest its glory. 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 Her duty is to be able to manifest the glory of God. That's the duty that God has granted to the church. Secondly, since it's a glorious church, it is natural for for her to manifest the power and authority of God, which is above, which is in in heaven's above and on the earth, to be able to. To be able to overwhelm and break uh, the uh, the power of the devil. Since it's a glorious church, what, why does God build her? God has established a glorious church in order to complete the salvation plan of God. Therefore, the main theme of the Acts of the Apostles is to build the glorious church. Hmm. So this theme, glorious church, is the second part of the salvation plan. It has already entered the second part. The second part is the second part. This theme about building the glorious church is already the second part of the salvation plan of God. The second part of the salvation plan of God is the second part of the salvation plan of God. The second part of the salvation plan of God is the second part of the salvation plan of God. 四福音书里面记载的耶稣降生，耶稣定死是十字架，是救赎计划的第一个部分。Because the first part was already been recorded in the gospel books of Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke about the crucifixion of Jesus. 所以耶稣死的时候呢，最后计划说成了，神的救恩计划成了，救赎那个部分成全了，成功了。Which is why when the Lord Jesus died on the cross and He said it is finished, because the will, the salvation plan of God is finished of this part. 所以四福音一看完过后，哈。一一看完过后，就接着就是使徒行传， right、就进入就直接进入到救恩的第二个部分。Right after this part one of the salvation plan, after the gospel books, we enter into the second part in the Acts of the Apostles. 还记得吗？第二个部分就是圣灵降临的，就是要建立教会。And part two begins with the descension of the Holy Spirit to build a church. 所以这里全部都在讲圣灵建立教会，圣灵带领教会。So it all talks about how the church abuses and guides the church. 完全是在谈教会的，使徒行传完全是在谈教会。Yes, the apostles talks all about the church. 那经文的第三个部分，最后才谈才谈教会被提升天。But the third part of the salvation plan is talking about the、uh, the church of God being lifted to heaven. 那个只需要看启示录了。Then we have to look at the book of the Revelation. 当启示的时候，我们都不叫做信徒了，我们叫做圣徒，已经圣洁圣洁了。We are no longer known as the members of the church, but the saints of the church. You see, actually, he talks about us as saints, but he doesn't talk about us as saints. He refers to us as saints because we are already saints. To the end, we are saints, and then we are raised to heaven. This is the last part. The last part is the saints of the church. You will notice that in the book of Revelation, they will no longer call us as the brethren or the members of the church, but the saints of God. This is called the brethren or the members of the church, but the saints of God. This is called the brethren or the members of the church, but the saints of God. This is called the brethren or the members of the church. 最后呢，升天就是全部结束，全部成功。
this will this will be the final episode of the salvation plan of God. As for the apostles, uh, has the focus on the part of on part two of salvation plan that is about the church. Building of the church. Building of the glorious church. This is also the theme of the book of Ephesians. Which is why you can uh, re make reference to it. Today members should understand the mission of the church. Also to understand the responsibility of the church. And in fact, uh, the true church of the end times is also the church of the revival of the apostolic era. It is the mission and also duty of the true church. It has to be able to revive the uh, apostolic church of the old times. Because the apostolic church was already being, uh, being confused by the devil uh, after uh, 100 uh, AD. Yeah. Uh, Therefore, the members of the church must read this episode of the Acts Because it's about your duty and mission that God has given you. It's about your duty and responsibility in the true church. And your responsibility is to revive the apostolic church. Which is why you have to read this book in order to understand. Not only should you, must you read, but you must be familiarized with it. To truly understand and see how the Holy Spirit guides and leads the church. Not only should you be familiar with the Bible, with this Acts of the Apostles, you must also practice what all these words. And this is the focus that I want to share with you, the spirits of serving God. Not only, not only must you read it, you must also understand it, not only must you understand it, you must practice the works in it. On this theme, building of the glorious church, we also share about five main points. Remember the theme is building of the glorious church. And after this major theme, we have also five minor themes. First, the preparation of the church. Secondly, the birth of the church. How was it finally born? Thirdly, the authority of the glorious church. Fourthly, the church in the times of storms. When, is, when the church is persecuted by the devil and Satan, it is the church in the storms. Then you'll be able to see the state of the faith of the, our members. The fifth Fifthly, the growth of the church in the storms. Not only was the church uh, not stopped by the storms, but the church was able to march forward. These are the five minor uh, themes I would like to share with you under the major theme. After we share about these five uh, minor themes, I will continue to share with you on another perspective of the church. That's to discover the crisis of our faith in the, in the church from Acts of the Apostles. You realize that in every chapter there is a crisis of the church. And how shall we 
uh, face and uh, deal and overcome this crisis. These are all very precious. Uh, after we, uh, we have read past uh, these chapters, we have also heard from different uh, preachers about how they explain you have read through so many times, do you notice the crisis of the church? After we finish the five minor themes of this uh, uh, book, we will share about the crisis. We ask the Lord Jesus to help us. By the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that we are able to share about this book according to His will. So that we are able to also understand the duty and the mission of the of God. We look at the Acts of the Apostles, chapter one. We look at the first minor theme. The preparation of the church. What is there to prepare about this glorious church? We can see the two aspects of preparation uh, between God and man. While God is preparing, man shall also prepare. What was God preparing? Firstly, verse 1. Of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach is all about Jesus. You know that God has prepared Jesus. In simple words, uh, uh, the Lord prepared salvation. Jesus is the lamb that was being killed for sacrifice. That is to redeem and wash away our sins. In the preparation from God that is preparing salvation grace. Secondly, what did the Lord God prepare? The Lord God prepared the environment. What kind of environment was the time of the apostolic era? We all know that this uh, uh, apostolic era was a time when the Roman Empire reigned. This was the environment that the Lord God has prepared. Do you notice that? In the book of Daniel, we, uh, it talks about uh, the establishment of the Holy Temple of God. Didn't uh, Babylon build the, uh, the large uh, golden statue? By that golden idol, um, it, they prophesied about four uh, kingdoms. The first being the Babylonian king. And then the uh, Persian kingdom. And then the, the Greek kingdom. And finally, the Roman Empire. After the Roman Empire, it comes to the end times. Why should we talk about these four kingdoms? The book of Daniel talks about the kingdom of God, the, the church of God, as well as the people of God. God has predestined his times, and he talks about the face of the church. And why, why should we all start from uh, the Babylonian kingdom? Why shouldn't we talk about the Assyrian kingdom before this kingdom? Why we talk about uh, Babylon? Why? Because when did the, when was the kingdom of God being destroyed? When was the time that the people of God was being captured? When was the temple of God being destroyed? It all started in the kingdom of Babylon. From the king Nebuchadnezzar. The era of King Nebuchadnezzar was the, was the time when the church of God was being in was being exiled. 
那教会被掳，就是哦，圣殿哦，百姓被掳，圣殿被毁坏，就关乎神的教会，关乎关乎神的国，关乎神的百姓。When the church was been exiled, and the people of God was been exiled, and it all started from there. 那么一直到波斯啊，波斯帝国。Until the kingdom of Persia. 那个关那个是教会的什么时代，知道吗 ？What kind of generation was that? 我们熟悉的那个以西以西以以斯帖嘛时代，以斯帖故事。So the story about Esther that we are all familiar with. 那个是教会的什么时代，知道吗 ？What kind of era? 波斯时代就是教会哈恩典时代。The Persian kingdom refers to the、uh, the the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for the church. Because the Persian kingdom refers to the era of grace for And that's the time when the grace of God finally descended on them. After the seventy years of captivity, they are allowed to return. You are to return not to enjoy the world, but to return to your、uh, to, to your kingdom to rebuild the church, the temple. And this is the time that God has given to the Israelites. The time of grace. Until they come to the Greek kingdom. 请问这个这个是关教会关教会什么时代？这个时候，希腊时代是教会的什么时代呢 ？So what is this the generation、uh, to be to symbolize of the church? 是教会的啊、uh, 黑暗时代。It prefigures the dark age of the church. 就是我们从圣经看的新约旧约跟新约那个中间的叫做啊、uh, 叫做沉默时期。That's the age. It is also known as the 500 years silent age、uh, between the Old Testament and the New Testament. This, 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 As well as、uh, the、uh, Gospel book of Matthew, there is a、uh, 500 years of silence when God did not utter a word. God did not raise a worker or a prophet. So, simply put, it was completely silent, completely silent, completely silent. Complete silence. So, it's called the age of silence. It's known as the age of silence from God. It's also the silence of the church. 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 This is known as the dark age of the church. Because God did not, did not utter a word, and there was no light then. Believers of God had no word of God, and that means darkness. And that was the、uh, Greek kingdom of the, the time of the King Alexander. I talk about. I previously shared about the large golden idol of、uh, Babylon, and it was until recently that I、uh, was able to make reference to find out this、uh, revelation. Until the time of the Roman Empire, that's the birth of the Lord Jesus. The birth of the Lord Jesus brings about the age of salvation. Why am I talking about this? Because God is preparing the environment, and when the Lord Jesus is born, into the Roman Empire, there are two aspects. What is the greatest contribution of the Roman Empire to the world? We don't have to talk about the civilization and the enjoyment of the human history. The biggest、uh, contribution of the Roman Empire is to build the roads. So we have a saying, "Open the way, open Rome. You don't need to worry, you don't need to give up. Open the way, open Rome. There is a road that leads to Rome. Which is why there is a saying that all roads lead to Rome. Really, Rome when it was in the realm, he built the road to reach the whole world. In the time in the government of the、uh, of Rome, the roads help people to connect to the whole world. In the past, you may have to go by the boats, but now we all have the roadways. 
from the east to the west. The highways and the roads have connected all the countries in Europe from east to west to Asia to Africa. Which means you are connected. But the northern and the southern uh, America was not connected yet. But this is also one of the most important factors of building of the gospel. The Holy Spirit is to descend to build a church. If there are no roads for you to travel on, how do we preach? In terms of this environment and the roadways to preach the gospel, God has already prepared. What is the second contribution of the Roman Empire? Other than the roadways? It's also the language of Greek. The New Testament has been written in Greek to preach the gospel in Greek as well. And in the era of Jesus, the many people spoke in Greek. When we talk about the original text, it is, the, it is in Greek, not in Hebrew. But Hebrew was the more ancient text and language used uh, to, to talk about the era of Abraham. But in the Old Testament, uh, parts of it were written in uh, Greek. Parts of it was written in just like uh, our uh, English today, you can preach the gospel in English everywhere. And uh, regardless of the racial differences, we speak English to understand each other. Because it is also the lingua franca of the world. And the Greek was also their uh, international language. If a gospel was not preached in Greek, and nobody would understand your gospel. You'll notice that these are the environmental factors that the Lord God has prepared, uh, firstly about Roman Empire, the road, and secondly the language. Because in in other times of other kingdoms, there are no such convenience. And this is all the preparation of God. According to the predestined time of the Lord God himself uh, throughout uh, different kingdoms from Persia to uh, Roman Empire. What else did God prepare? Chapter 1, verse 2. God also prepared the workers. Here it says the, those are the apostles are by the, uh, through the Holy Spirit. Although one apostle was had betrayed the Lord Jesus, but he was then he was then filled up. The, the church uh, finally uh, emerged in chapter 2. Oh, chapter 1 did not see the church. But there was the preparation for the church to prepare the workers of the church. We have to take note that even these 12 disciples have been prepared in order to work for the church in the future. Just as the Lord God has prepared us as his workers, some of us forsook the world to work and to study theological courses in order to be to serve the church. 
The most specialized or full-time worker of God refers to the preacher. Because other workers of the church are, are perhaps part-time, they have to work in the world. The preachers have been trained by the church in order to serve the church. These are the workers prepared by the Lord Jesus for the church. If the church does not want to utilize him, then it will become the uh, uh, the setback for the church and the setback for the individual preacher. Because if the worker was prepared by the church for the church to use and the church does not want to use him, it will be such a um such a setback. What else did the Lord God prepare? In this chapter, we see the Lord God prepare the Holy Spirit. Verse 4. The Lord told them to not to, not to uh, leave, but to wait for the Holy Spirit of promise. The Lord God has already been preparing the Holy Spirit since chapter 1. Therefore, the Holy Spirit was prepared for the workers of God. The Holy Spirit was also prepared for the church. The Holy Spirit was also prepared for the sake of the salvation grace. Before the Holy Spirit was been sent down, the Lord God, uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, Commanded them to wait with patience until chapter 2, the, the Holy Spirit finally descended. But while we see the descension of the Holy Spirit in chapter 2, chapter 1, the Lord Jesus was preparing all for it. What is the fifth uh, preparation? Verse 10. The Lord God prepared angels. What was the angels doing as uh, what was the manger? The major reason for uh, the angels to emerge is to assist the workers of God. This is a time when the workers of God had been uh, in, had been in a state of uh, of, a, of, a, of of not moving, and uh, they were enjoying the spiritual thrill. They were not moving. They were not taking any action just by standing there. It was not right. Who was the one who reminded them? Who was the one who woke them up? Who was the one who warned them? Who helped them? The angels. The angels were prepared for the sake of the church as well as the sake of the members and the workers of God. Therefore, Hebrews chapter one tells us that the angels were prepared for, to minister uh, for the uh, for the members of the church. In chapter one, I see preparation of the church. And in this preparation can be broken down into two aspects: the preparation from God. And in chapter one, God has prepared five items for us. What is our conclusion? Our conclusion is that the Lord God, our God, is a God of preparation. He is a God of salvation and also our God of preparation. All the time from the time of Adam, what did he prepare for Adam? The Lord God prepared the Garden of Eden until the age of Noah. What did the Lord God prepare for the people there? The Lord God prepared an ark. And until the time of Abraham, what did God prepare for Abraham? The Lord God prepared Abraham with a, uh, a goat. Which is why um, he, uh, he also called the Lord God uh, Jehovah Yireh. And uh, from on the mountain of God, there will, uh, there will be preparation. Uh, this, it all comes from the story of Jehovah Yireh, where God is the God who prepares. And this, this goat is also uh, to prefigure the Lamb of Je as Jesus Christ. 
until the time of Moses, what did God prepare for the Israelites? The Lord God prepared the land of Canaan. By delivering them out of Egypt into uh, the land of Canaan. All the way from the time of Adam of, in the Garden of Eden until today, the Lord God has been preparing for us. And all these examples that I've quoted are all examples of Him preparing for our members. Until today, we are entering into the new age, the end times. That the Lord God has prepared for us salvation grace. Whether in the apostolic era or today's era, we are all prepared with the salvation. That we are all able to be saved. That we are able to inherit the heavenly kingdom. The Lord God prepares salvation for us, and what about in the future? The Lord God prepares for us a glorious heavenly kingdom. That's for us to enter in the future. But now we can't. But God has already prepared for us. And the Bible describes to us that it will be a it will be a city in heaven that was prepared for us. But my uh, my focus is that God is the God who prepares. In everything that He does, He prepares. Before He builds the church, He prepares. All in His time. If our God is a God who prepares, but have you prepared? What have you prepared? God is a God who prepares, but what have you prepared? Now we talk about preparation of man. What does man have to prepare? In chapter 1, verse 14. Verse 13 talks about the 11 disciples. And in verse 14 talks about a few women. And also showed to us the mother of Jesus. And the brothers of Jesus. Verse 15. And the numbers of the number of the people who attended was 120. Yeah, what, we, what kind of preparation of man can we see? I can see this group of people preparing their hearts to repent and accept. Why do I say so? If you remember that the younger brothers of Jesus did not believe in Jesus. And these brothers, this, these brothers were, were once mocking Jesus that if he was so great, uh, you should might as well uh, find your way to Jerusalem yourself. All these words express their disunbelief. But when you read to Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, his brothers together with other apostles uh, that were worshipping the Lord Jesus. With the heart, with the heart of repentance and a heart of belief. Not only do I believe now, I also accept him. Which is why they all continued in one accord to pray. Therefore, on God's end, the God has prepared, but the people of God has also prepared. When the salvation grace of God has come upon us, people have to prepare themselves with a heart of uh, repentance uh, and also belief and acceptance. God has prepared so many things. But you have not prepared yourself. You do not believe. You don't accept. You don't repent. What are all these things which are prepared good for you? There will be no use for you. The salvation grace cannot save you because you cannot believe. 
那些方便、那些环境这么好的环境给你也没有用的，因为你不信了、啊。你只是拿来贪爱世界而已、啊。The wondrous arrangement of the environments for you, you do not use because you only use it to love the world. 给你一堆工人来传福音给你，来关心你，来来来来来来，好，来来来拯救你。也没有用的，因为你不接受。And God has also prepared. God has also prepared His workers to help you understand and believe, but you you still do not believe, and they will be of no use to you. So God has prepared, but have you prepared? And so God has prepared, but have you prepared? The second person needs to prepare. What are the second aspects of the? Please write down. Person needs to prepare is the preparation of the preparation for man. That is to prepare the heart of repentance and acceptance. Secondly, in this chapter, we can also see that they prepare themselves with the heart to receive the Holy Spirit. Because they simply believe. They simply believe in the words of Jesus to wait for the Holy Spirit. So they prepare themselves to wait for the Holy Spirit. And every day they prepare themselves to wait for the Holy Spirit. Oh, I don't know. I don't know on which day would the Holy Spirit come. Therefore, I have to wait. Perhaps it's tomorrow. If not tomorrow, the day after. Or ten days later. How would I know? I can only wait with faith. And I have to prepare my heart in order to uh to ask for the Holy Spirit. This is the preparation from man. The third preparation is to prepare a heart of prayer. With prayer, we wait for the Holy Spirit. If they did not have the action of prayer in chapter one, they wouldn't have the Holy Spirit in chapter two. The dissension of the Holy Spirit that you see in chapter two is because of the prayer in chapter one. There was about 120 people who were waiting in prayer for the Holy Spirit. They were able to manifest them a testimony of prayer and a testimony of prayer. This is the uh the minor theme of the preparation of the church in chapter one. Preparation is divided into two: the aspect of God's preparation and also the aspect of man's preparation. I can conclude here. Ah, we will continue about chapter one. That is the first lesson in chapter one. 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 The first lesson in chapter one.